Any wallabies down there? Not that I can see. Uh, here we are in the hills of Oahu, continuing our quest for the elusive rock wallabies of Oahu. It's a lot of Oahus. Here we are. I've made hundreds of films and been on thousands of adventures. And I've always kind of hated on documentary filmmakers who put themselves inside the movie. But I'm also comfortable with contradiction. And I think I'm the best one to tell this story. So I'm going to do it this time. My name is Daniel Dronesfield. I'm a filmmaker, obscurely renowned cryptozoologist. Here we are on the island of Oahu, searching for giant wallabies. That's right, wallabies. They're like miniature kangaroos. The rock wallabies. The wallabies. This is the wallaby. The wallaby. Wallabies are not native to Hawaii. A wallaby is a type of kangaroo. The animal was grazing here on the Tabalanza's grass. I'm so surprised because kangaroo in here, in Hawaii, I mean, around the you know, neighborhood, I, I not, I'm shocked. Mrs. Tabalanza, I can relate. I too am shocked. So I decided to investigate. We begin in lovely Honolulu. You guys ever see any wallabies around here? Nah, it's been a it's been a been a fair time since I've seen a proper wallaby. Just where did the wallaby come from? Um, how we got down here, I don't know. Well, the words of this melee say we find ourselves gathering here together on this beautiful Sunday. Children, parents, family, and friends, the generations coming together. And as we do so, we come together in one mind and one spirit, certainly one sharing of Aloha and wisdom. I first came out to Hawaii in 2005 for the Hawaii International Film Festival, uh, where my film, uh, The Ice Block Cometh, The Life of a Cambodian Ice Block, was premiering. I had a great time. Uh, my friend Kyle Jenkins arranged for some of his Hawaiian friends to come pick me up, and we sea kayaked out out to the Mokalua Islands, and we caught a papillo and fried it. And I've always had a very strong affection for Hawaii ever after that trip. I have returned many times since. There's something special about Oahu and Hawaii. This time, uh, this time I came out here to meet my niece, who was just freshly birthed here in the living room of my brother's house in Manoa. My brother is a scuba diving instructor, and he is the one who originally told me about the wallabies. As I mentioned before, in addition to being a filmmaker, I am a cryptozoologist of some small renown and have worked extensively tracking a dragon called the Naga that lives in the Mekong River, as well as investigating the Sasquatch of my own Pacific Northwest. In addition to that straight cryptozoological work, I am also known for my extensive interspecies linguistic work, attempting to bridge the linguistic divide that exists between humans and dolphins. So, for these and other reasons, the wallabies interest me, and I have the unique opportunity to be here just before the 100th anniversary of their arrival. More on that later. Before we talk about the wallaby, we gotta talk about the location we are in. Let's explore the history of Oahu briefly. By jet, only four or five hours separate the volcanic shores of the 50th member of the Union from the mainland of the United States. Oahu is an island in the middle of the ocean, the Pacific Ocean. Volcanic action and the shifting of the Earth's crust thrust these islands up from the depths. These islands are the newest land masses on Earth. It was permanently settled by humans around 500 AD. They came from Asia and Polynesia, the nomads of the sea, looking for a new place to live. That is how the story of Hawaii began. The first European to encounter the Hawaiian Islands was James Cook in 1778. He was initially mistaken for a god, and later he was torn limb from limb by a tribe that he had outraged. Many tribal kings fought for control of the islands over the years, but Kamehameha the Great eventually won out and created the first united Hawaiian kingdom in 1795. The voyages of Magellan, Cook, Darwin, and others would seed Europe with stories of a paradise in the South Pacific where friendly natives lived carefree 
under tropical skies, where ownership was unknown and unnecessary, and nature's bounty was everywhere. Then came whaling ships who brought brothels and mosquitoes and missionaries. In 1891, a group of American businessmen seized control of Hawaii from Queen Ililio Kalani and declared it a republic. In 1898, Hawaii was annexed by the U.S. as a new territory. Hawaii became a U.S. state in 1959. Statehood does not change Hawaii as much as it changes the United States. Differences of race, religion, and culture are enrichments for all Americans. It is possible that someday a president of the United States will call Hawaii his home like those adventurers who first found the Hawaiian shores 1,500 years ago, these young Hawaiians can look forward to unlimited opportunities. My brother moved out to Hawaii in 2008, and uh, being something of an invasive species himself, he's taught himself to become an invasive species expert. Hello. I'm Andrew Dronesfield. What do you want with me? I want to know about the invasive species uh, that exists on Oahu. Uh, invasive species in Hawaii, uh, it's a long, complicated history uh, built on destruction of pristine wilderness, uh, mostly by humans, uh, which I consider the first invasive species in the Hawaiian Islands. And this represents one of our non-invasive species prime example of how native plants can thrive if left to their own devices. What are the native species of the Hawaiian Islands? Uh, well, there were many species of uh, plants, birds, fish, um, land, sea, and air creatures um, that evolved for millennia. Uh, basically anything that could uh, be blown here by the wind or drift here on uh, flotsam in the ocean. Uh, could arrive on these shores and basically thrive in a pretty unique environment. The original voyagers that landed here brought uh, three animals specifically to help sustain them here. Uh, we got pigs. Pig. Pig. Pig's scientific name. <laughs> Sus. Scruffa scruffa. Chickens. 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 Chicken's scientific name is Gallus. Gallus. And dogs. 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 Dog's scientific name is Canis lupus familiaris. They brought a couple more, they think, uh, some geckos, some little lizards that stowed away on their boats. Geckos. Gecko's scientific name is Gekanidae. And rats, which have been a huge, huge menace to uh, the native plants and animals that were here before the Polynesians arrived. Rat's scientific name is Rattus Rattus. Okay, so if every species is invasive or introduced, uh, where does the wallaby fall in all of this? Wallabies are a special category. The wallabies just exist. They're in a very few places. They're pretty much secluded, um, and uh, they're not they're not bothering anybody. They're just hanging out being wallabies. They seem to be very rare, uh, very elusive, hiding in the in the bush most of the time because there are very few pictures of of the ones and very. Seldom do we even get reports of people seeing uh, these, these wallabies. out a viewer was able to snap a photo of a wallaby on Oahu. That, that photo was taken in Kalihi Valley where according to the State Forestry and Wildlife Division fewer than a hundred wallabies live.
1916, Richard Henderson Trent brought uh, two adult wallabies and one baby to Oahu to start a private zoo. Three days after their arrival, a wild dog attacked the wallabies and killed their baby. The two adult wallabies fled into the bush. There, they created this entire colony. They've been there for a hundred years. It's like, uh, it's like Jeff Goldblum's character said in Jurassic Park, nature finds a way. We had a visiting scientist from back east who was a mammalogist, and he said, could he come here and study the wallaby? And I said, well, sure, I'm getting a lot of questions about it. We need some help. So he and I did some research back in the 60s and uh, actually caught them, trapped them, and I pointed out how difficult it was. They're in a very steep cliff area, They're very difficult to get at. Uh, it could be dangerous, going up and down. You're either gonna, you probably use ropes to find them in their, where they're centered. Based on the work of Skip Lazell and Ron Walker, we do know these brush-tailed rock wallabies are a bit larger than their Australian ancestors. Now it might just be that they're inbred. But it's also possible that this diet of strawberry guava and Christmas berries has allowed them to grow faster and larger than the original Australian population. Whatever reason, natural selection has steered them towards island gigantism. Island gigantism? Island gigantism. Island gigantism is caused by a number of factors. First off is not having any constraints on your life, uh, not having any predators, having ample food. Island gigantism. It's known as the island rule. In island mammals, small animals and omnivores tend to get bigger, while carnivores tend to shrink. In this case, the wallaby's adaptation to their new environment was not only swift, but extraordinarily thorough. Uh, due to the fact that these wallabies are all descendants of a single pair of Australian wallabies, uh, James Lazell Jr. reports that not only did the animal's external appearance change, so did the amino acid structure of at least one of their liver enzymes, which uh, helped them to safely feed on otherwise toxic plants on Oahu. So, they evolved rapidly enough that they were able to eat plants that were poisonous to them in their native land and they changed color, and now they're giants. So, how many men does it take to catch a wallaby? They're very timid and shy. They, they try to stay away from the population. The only natural predator of the wallaby? Dog, also an introduced species. It's a classic example of what we call a poi dog brought with the uh, Polynesian voyagers uh, when they first settled the Hawaiian Islands. In our hunt for rock wallabies, uh, it's always a good sign to be familiar with the terrain and find terrain that they like. Here, uh, as you can see, rocks, prime rock wallaby habitat. So search, so set out and search. And search we did. The island is small and we journeyed to all of its rocky crags. Any mm -hmm. Based on the limited knowledge that we have of the wallaby population, it's hard to say if they've become submarine or marine, for that matter, marine wallabies. It's 100 years on the island, they could have adapted. Yeah, there's evolutionary possibilities are limitless. So today, we're going to go out in the sea and check for wallabies of the sea. I know it's abstract and strange, but we've got to look everywhere, it's important. Perhaps it is quixotic to quest for wallabies beneath the sea, but perhaps it's quixotic to quest for anything at all. And is quixotry necessarily a negative thing? I mean, you may never get to go adventuring, or when you go adventuring, you may stub your toe, but the, the, the struggle is the blessing, you know. 
the journey the journey is the destination tell it to the wallabies but they already know in case you haven't put it together I didn't find any wallabies but I know they're there and I'll be back We all need a wallaby, you know, to search for. Yeah. He's actually make he's actually making a movie. <laughs>